Hello everyone, welcome to Impression. So today I brought a Apple Watch Series 6 and ever since I did the Apple Watch uh, unboxing video, I've been wearing every single day, so it's been about a month. So this is my first ever Apple Watch. So if you own a previous version like Series 5, this video might be redundant because of most of the feature that Apple Series 6 has like same thing as the previous generation is based on all based on software and OS. That's what uh, Apple Watch is known for. But compared to Series 5, now Series 6 has 2.5 times brighter always on display, bigger Taptic engine, bigger battery, and 20% faster processor. They also added two new sensors like blood oxygen level sensor and always on altimeter sensors. And of course, it's still waterproof up to 50 meters, even though it doesn't have IP. For design choices, you get aluminum case, stainless steel, and titanium cases. This year, they introduced the new color for the aluminum cases, red and blue. Also, they introduced the new solo loop band series. If you go to Apple's website, you can actually choose the exact design that you wish to watch. Get it? Uh, by choosing the band and you can choose the size and material and you can also choose the color and Apple seems to heavily emphasize on the uh, experience of choosing the design and then making it by yourself. In fact, when I went to the Apple's offline store, the salesperson actually encouraged me to try every band and every color they have. Even though I knew exactly what I wanted and this was exactly what I wanted, I got to try everything they offered. Now let's go to the actual functionality. As you can expect from the wearable technology and smartwatch in general, the biggest feature they are offering is the fitness function. It has a whole library of uh, fitness that you can choose from, from simple outdoor running or swimming to like kickboxing and water polo or even fishing, they have fishing. Otherwise, if you don't have the uh, activity that you're looking for, you can simply choose others and then set your own goal by how much burning calorie you need to have or uh, how much duration you like to do that activities. Uh, personally, I use a lot of the uh, functional strength training uh, for a home workout because I do a lot of push up and pull ups and I can't, since I can't go to gym anymore because of the situation. And I also do outdoor running for my cardio, which has uh, most of the functionality that the uh, Apple Watch can offer. Start outdoor run. Because they not only check your calories, how long you've been exercised, it tells you the average pace of your running time, altimeters, GPS tracking for checking on your map, and real-time heart rate monitors also. Personally, I found the average pace calculation and the heart rate monitoring to be very useful because that generally tells me if I'm tired for the day so that I have to increase the speed or decrease the speed. Uh, I can just adjust it by myself just looking at my watch. And there's also a little game that Apple put it on the watch to encourage you to do more activities such as closing the rings. Uh, that's based on your goal that you set it on and you can achieve that, you can close the ring for the day. And if you do that enough and do your exercise hard enough, you can also earn badges. So overall, it promotes you to do more exercise and achieve your goal. And I found it to be very encouraging for me, especially when I wake up, wake up in the morning that I really don't like to do exercise in the morning, but it alarms you or notif notification you that uh, it's time to exercise. And it's all based on uh, by learning algorithm uh, they put it on so that you don't have to put the notification like fitness notification it's all based on how frequent you exercise in the morning or afternoon or around that time and that gives me feeling of I actually have a personal coach on my wrist and then let me know that I, it's time to exercise or it's time to achieve my goal and it's time to uh, burn my calorie or stand up and that kind of stuff I found it to be very useful that's all I'm saying and this year, they also added 20 second hand washing notification. It listen to the water sound and then uh, detects the hand washing motion and count up to 20 seconds whether you wash your hand for properly or not. And it's actually smart enough that if you stop washing your hand, it stops the count. So I guess that's very useful, especially around this time you know, pandemics happening. And they also added noise notification this year that tells you whether your environment in is too loud for your ears, that it can actually hurt your eardrum, I guess. Uh, or if you're listening to the headphone too loud or earphone too loud, it lets you know that your music is too loud. 
But personally, I like to listen to music aloud. So leave me alone. Speaking of music, if you have a cellular motor, unlike me, you can actually stream directly to your Apple Watch to your earphone if you're connected to uh, Bluetooth. And this year, apparently, they also support the third-party apps like Spotify, with Tidal, uh, not just Apple Music, but I found it to be Spotify app very buggy sometimes it doesn't quite work it doesn't really know what i'm playing sometimes right now apple music is a straightforward way of using the actual functionality for the gps model you have to make a playlist from your phone and download it to your watch either way is very beneficial because you don't have to carry your phone on your pants while you're running outside that's really bug the hell out of me and you can also leave it on your charger uh, while you're doing your own thing so for me the cellular version right now is not complete feels though it's pretty incomplete because not only it doesn't have any web browser function like safari they should include it really and uh, you can watch a youtube video and you're gonna have to tether with your iphone whether you like it or not uh, at, at the end of the day so if apple can figure it out by not tethering to your iPhone all the time and able to use it as a standalone devices, um, cellular model will be more popular, I think. Now let's talk about the new sensor, the blood oxygen level sensor. I really can't think of anything that's really good about it. First of all, the location that it's measuring is here, uh, which is terrible because blood oxygen level sensor are usually measure on tip of your fingertip where the blood is thinnest so that it's easier to measure and it's more accurate. If it's closer to your heart, it will show a better number than your tip of your finger. And two, if you're a healthy person like I am, a normal healthy person, then there's no real need for this kind of sensor. Like it's so unnecessary. What does it actually tell me? Like how much oxygen is melted in my blood? Like what does it tell me? Like every time I measure it, it's like either 95% or 100%. So it's like, it doesn't really tell me anything unless you have a very specific uh, condition or if you have COVID, even then if you have COVID, you will measure it in the hospital. I don't like, I'm bashing out about this because Apple is heavily emphasized, heavily advertised about this new sensor, which is pointless and useless. You get it, right? And they're not even the first. This is Galaxy Note 4. This is a heart rate monitor sensor and plus plus oxygen level sensor. So they're not even the first to put it on the mobile devices. The breathing app, however, I found it to be very useful. Gradually lets you know when to breathe and breathe out using the Taptic engine. And here's a sound that I recorded. Because of that, you can actually feel it without your eyes open. And that kind of helps you to meditate and decompress a lot. Also the bedtime tracking app, is quite useful. You have to wear it while you're sleeping. It detects the motion of your, when you're sleeping, that lets you know whether you're, how long you've been actually sleeping. I'm personally not good at sleeping. Uh, so this has been like really good for me and it actually helped me to increase my sleeping time. But unlike third party app, it doesn't show the detailed information about your sleeping quality, such as whether you're dreaming or you're, are you snoring? Are you uh, into REM sleeping or are you into deep sleeping? It doesn't tell me anything about it, but I'm not complaining. It's something that if they can edit onto it, it will be even better. Consequently, because I have to wear in when I'm going to bed, the question goes, uh, when can I charge this? Well, I usually charge when I'm eating breakfast or take when I'm taking a shower. And that gives me about window time of half an hour to an hour of charging time a day. We don't have to charge it every single day. It can give you solid two days of battery life. Uh, but I usually hope between anywhere from 90% to 30%. But if I need more battery life out of it, I probably can just reduce the brightness of the display since now the 
display is much brighter. And the Apple Watch now have uh, fast charging enables zero to 80%, it can charge within an hour and zero to 100% uh, you can charge it within an hour and a half. So bottom line, I'm happy to report that Apple Watch Series 6 is done really right and they didn't fix anything that is not broken from the previous generation. Yet, I feel like it needs more kick to pay $200 more over the S version SE because always on display and then the blood oxygen meter that is quite useless, it's not exciting enough for people to pay more like $200. So if you're an entry user who just want to try a new um, smartwatch in general, then I'll go for the SE. But if you are looking for the best and pinnacle of the wearable technology, you won't regret of buying Apple Watch Series 6. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.